your excellencies, peers, friends, and the global Yazidi family. I stand before you today to tell you that the Yazidi people and all minorities and Sinjaris are at risk like never before. Today, we commemorate, we condole, and we call out. The existence of endangered communities is precious to our Middle East and to our world. Losing any community would mean losing a chance at peace. You have seen this documentary with your own eyes. My team was just there. We saw more than just the devastation and depth of loss. Our cameras saw what dehumanization looks like and still looks like. The footage you saw today is in no way demonstrates the colossal magnitude of the complexities and dangers facing Sinjaris today. We did not include footage of Mount Sinjar on August 2014 with children starving and corpses laying bare. We did not include ISIS propaganda videos of women being chained and traded for perverts seeking the pleasures of sexual violence. We did not include ISIS propaganda footage of children we rewired in education camps and preparing for warfare. But I hope what we were able to show you in less than 10 minutes is what life in Sinjar feels like for survivors who escaped all these atrocities. But those atrocities can never escape them. This short documentary commissioned and funded and co-produced by the Zovigan Partnership, is here to be a public Yazidi advocacy asset for every Yazidi to be able to take ownership of in their own rights when in front of a world that is increasingly forgetting that we are still in genocide eight years in. The Yazidi cause is bigger than all of us. Together, we make a great force calling for justice, accountability, and deep healing. But what is even bigger than all of us combined is inaction. And if we are not going to work together every step of the way with meticulous diplomatic and strategic might, we will fail. We will fail the Yazidi people. We will fail historic minorities in Sinjar. And we will fail setting precedents in the world, a world that needs a new model that teaches all of us how humanity can overpower and destroy evil. This is why we are gathered here today not to host a commemorative conference as we have done in previous years, but to host you, all of you, for a memorial where the voices of the Yazidi people come first and are center stage. I would like to extend a re-invitation to each and every one of you to join us hand in hand so that our Yazidi friends are no longer put on the defensive and made beggars of their present lives and future existence. Today, everything is urgent, from security and representation in Sinjar to infrastructure, housing, basic services, economic redevelopment, education, health, an end to the permanence of the IDP camps. From saving the lives of those who can no longer wait to return home to bringing back those who have left Iraq, possibly permanently, ensuring that justice is served and accountability is achieved for every single Yazidi woman and girl, every Yazidi man and boy who was taken in the hands of Daesh. Some of them are still in 
the hands of Daesh. Over the month of August, Yazda and the Zovigin Partnership will be releasing reports and policy briefs on transitional justice, security, and representation in the public administration of Sinjar. The Yazidi people today are the most important experts of their lives. They are also the critical determinants of their future. The longer we wait, the more every Yazidi will reconsider a future in Sinjar and the Middle East. We want to take this community-led expertise to Baghdad, and we want to see you all there. We are counting on Baghdad to welcome us. The federal government of Iraq and the Kurdistan regional government need to take responsibility. We need to see their leadership, not tomorrow, but today. Inaction can no longer be the chosen policy for Sinjar for the Yazidi people and for historic communities of the region. So let us try again, but this time, let us make sure it works.